मैम या श्योर एम आई ऑडिबल यस मैम यू आर परफेक्टली ऑडिबल इन दिस यस द मीटिंग इज लाइव ऑन यूट्यूब नाउ वी मे बी गेट ओके मैम ओके गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन आई एम कामिश सिद्दीकी स्टूडेंट ऑफ बी ए इंग्लिश फ्रॉम बी एन एन कॉलेज एंड यूर होस्ट फॉर टू डेज वर्कशॉप आई एक्सचेंज द वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल at the 15th national level e workshop on ugc net jrf in english on the occasion of birth anniversary of padma shri anna saheb jadav i would Mitch. like a special thanks to the principal Mitch. of the college excuse me kamal would it be possible for you to use a microphone like an earphone or something yes ma'am it will be possible हेलो हेलो आई एम ऑडिबल यस इट्स बेटर नाउ यस ओके ओके शुड आई स्टार्ट अगेन यस ओके गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन आई एम कामिश सिद्दीकी स्टूडेंट ऑफ बीए इंग्लिश फ्रॉम बीएनएन कॉलेज एंड योर होस्ट फॉर टुडेस वर्कशॉप आई एक्सटेंड अ वार्म वेलकम टू एवरीवन at the 15th national level e workshop on ugc net jrf in english on the occasion of centenary celebration of birth anniversary of padma shri anna saheb jadav i would like to extend uh, extend a special thanks to the principal of bnn college dr ashok wag dr sudhir nikam chairman student, head head of english department chairperson board of studies in english england university of mumbai डॉक्टर शशिकांत मालूमकर और आईक्यूएसई कोऑर्डिनेटर प्रोफेसर भीमराव पाइकराव एंड प्रोफेसर रजनी वाघमारे फॉर मेकिंग दिस इवेंट पॉसिबल दिस वर्कशॉप एम्स टू इनवाइट एन एकम्पलिश इंडिविजुअल्स अक्रॉस टू मोटिवेट गाइड एंड पार्ट वैल्यूएबल इंफॉर्मेशन एंड नॉलेज टू द यूजीसी नेट एस्पिरेंट द एम इज आल्सो टू इंट्रोड्यूस द बेस्ट प्रैक्टिसेस फॉर क्रैकिंग द एग्जाम टू किक स्टार्ट द डे 8 ऑफ वर्कशॉप I would like to welcome honorable chief guest and speaker of the day Ms Pooja Ba Jadeja assistant professor and head department of english at Gujarat Arts and Commerce College Ahmedabad after passing gset in 2016 she had started her teaching career she has experience of teaching studies from various disciplines including arts commerce science diploma and post graduate students and also performed her duties as a center in charge of physician pg center at present she is working in gujarat arts and commerce college ahmedabad before starting the workshop i would like to say something about the topic today we are going to discuss with ms pooja ba ma'am non fictional prose what does it mean it means any literary work that is based mainly on fact even though it may contain fictional elements it refers to real life stories centered on real events and people examples such as essay and biography ms pooja ba ma'am we are grateful to you among us today we are looking forward to gather the knowledge from such a great personality on the topic non fictional prose i kamish siddiqui welcome you all on behalf of bnn college and from all our students i sincerely request ms pooja ba jadeja ma'am to take the lead and speak on this topic and enlighten all the students on non fictional prose as we begin with the event over you over to you ma'am thank you so much kamish for the introduction and uh, i am very grateful uh, to the college as well as to the minister for inviting me and this workshop as well as i am very happy to share something with all the students who joined And uh, who are going to watch me on? So thank you so much for the invitation. Uh, thank you. Let us begin. I hope this is going to 
be helpful for you. So I'm sharing my presentation here, Ms. Green. Ma'am, you are not clearly audible. Yes. Am I audible? You're audible, ma'am, but there's a lag. Madam, can you join through multiple uh, devices? That would be convenient. And in case you join through multiple devices, keep both the devices at a specific distance. No, I have joined the whole space. Your network is not stable. Are audible now? Yes, ma'am. Yes. You are audible clearly. Okay. Hello? Shall we start? Hello, am I audible? Yes, you are audible, but the network is not stable and uh, a lot of noise is there. Okay, okay. okay. Kamish, please mute your voice. Ah, madam, please go ahead. Hello, is it clear now? Yes, madam. Yes, please go ahead. Yes. Thank you. I hope my screen is visible to you. Is it? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So. Uh, the topic which is given to me is non-functional rules. Now I hope you are familiar with uh, the words that are used and 
verse, what is fiction, non fiction. So I'm not going in detail about these things. A fiction includes novels, dramas, and uh, short stories. Uh, here we are talking about the non fiction books that is totally different. Uh, text. This includes some of the very important forms like essays, letters, periodicals, diaries, journals, memoirs. Now, all these things we include in non fiction books. Uh, here you find that essays are divided in different categories, like personal essays, which are very subjective, talking about a particular subject, as well as personal feelings. Essays are supposed to give some information and some facts, but it is not always so. Sometimes some essays are talking about personal experiences and personal feelings. Uh, letters are also uh, very much personal, periodicals, magazines. Uh, there is a slight difference between diaries and journals. Now, diaries, uh, diary is talking about uh, daily animals. A person is describing his or her feelings, attitudes, moods, as well as thinking and everything. Uh, you find here that diaries are not meant to be published. It is something to be uh, kept as a secret. So uh, they're not published, they're not be revealed. So it is talking about some more personal things. And uh, journals are also about daily entries, but they're not that much personal. It is not that secret. So a person is sharing his or her own experiences in the form of journal between daily entries. And most are talking about particular times. Describing uh, some moments of a person's life. So, Madam, yes. your voice is not clear. Okay. Is it not coming properly? And there's a lot of dis disturbance in your voice. Okay. Just a minute. Is it clear now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. Let me off my video. I think then it will run properly. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am, all clear. Okay. So I was talking about the difference between diaries and journals and memoirs. Memoirs are something that uh, is not about a daily entries. We don't have to write it daily. But a person is uh, uh, describing some times or uh, some moments of his or her life. Then it is called memoirs. So it is uh, having autobiographical elements, but it is not talking about daily entries. And uh, diaries and journals are about daily entries of a person's life. Then we also include translation in uh, our non-fictional prose because there was a time where uh, uh, translation became too much important. For example, uh, in uh, the time before Renaissance, which we call as Middle Ages or Dark Ages, there were multiple translations of Bible and there's UGC net. Uh, set examination, there were multiple, uh, there were uh, questions multiple times on translation of Bible, who uh, has done translation of Bible, these and that. So uh, translation is also included and specifically translation of Bible is included in non-fictional prose. And history is also uh, considered as a non-fictional prose. There were multiple histories written 
uh, in different ages by different writers. So uh, these are very important uh, to be studied. So let us begin with uh, uh, pre-Renaissance period. Uh, instead of going in these theoretical details like the types of prose, analytical, or argumentative, descriptive, personal, or objective, I uh, I want to discuss it in detail. Uh, that is about uh, uh, prose, uh, which is written in particular uh, time, belongs to particular uh, historical ages. So. Uh, this is very important because the questions are coming from this exam uh, questions are coming from uh, the texts not about the theoretical part of uh, the prose so we will be exam oriented we will look forward about the text in instead of theory of what is prose and what is diary and memoirs okay so in pre-renaissance prose uh, this slide this slide includes uh, all the ages before Renaissance, starting from Anglo-Saxon age till uh, the Renaissance time. In Anglo-Saxon age, chronicles were written. Now, chronicles were basically uh, history books uh, talking about histories of different princes and kings. You must have heard this word chronicles uh, while studying Shakespeare because Shakespeare has written many plays and the material he has adapted it is from chronicles chronicles means histories for example julius caesar antony and cleopatra uh, now uh, he talked about all the kings and queens and the material the source of uh, the source was these chronicles written in the time of anglo-saxon and anglo-norman another important uh, non-fictional prose of the time was brute now and this uh, brute is uh, referring to particular kind of texts. For example, uh, brute word comes from Brutus. Brutus is a name of a king and the founder of Britain. For example, as we have name Bharat coming from Bharat. Like this, uh, the name Britain comes from uh, Brutus. So people uh, believed that Brutus was the original founder of the nation, Britain. And if any history book, uh, if it is talking about history of Britain and the life of Brutus, then it is called the text, the historical text is called Brut. So there are many Brutes uh, written in uh, Anglo-Norman age. Uh, you must have heard the name Lyamon's Brut. Now, uh, this Lamont's Brute was actually a poem, but the source is the history book, the history which is talking about uh, the life of Brutus and Britain. So it is called Brute, and Anglo-Norman age has many Brute. Another one is uh, travels, travel writing. In age of Chaucer, uh, Sir John Mandeville has written too many, uh, sorry, the first travel, uh, travel writing, it is said that he has traveled for 34 years and uh, he has visited many countries, including Asia and Africa. Even in the time of Chaucer, if you have observed uh, his famous text, Canterbury Tale, is also based on travels of the characters. So on these days, travel writing was very famous. And so John Mandeville was the first one, among the first writers of the uh, travelogues. Fourth one is a translation. Now, uh, this is a time before Renaissance that I uh, have talked about, a middle age or dark ages. In this age, there was too much corruption. It's corruption and religion. Uh, and there was a need of a translation of Bible. So uh, if there is no translation available of a Bible, then people cannot read it. So people uh, wanted to read and they wanted to understand because there is too much uh, uh, corruption in religion as well as misinterpretation of Bible. So there was a need and to fulfill this need, the first one who has done the translation of Bible was John Wycliffe. 
unfortunately he was not able to complete uh, the translation which he has started and uh, after that his disciples two disciples uh, have completed uh, his translation and then we have the translation of bible then uh, william tyndall and miles coverdell these two were also uh, among the uh, first translators of the bible miles coverdell is also related to uh, printing he was the first one to print english bible and william tyndall has translated new testament so this is very important yes uh so uh, john wycliffe and william tyndall they both have translated uh, bible and miles coverdell printed it and uh, if you know about this then uh, bible was uh, the first book which became the best seller Uh, let us move forward with renaissance prose in the age of renaissance there were many uh, prose writers and uh, we are supposed to divide these uh, prose writings in two categories the first one uh, is uh, history books and the second one is about the discussion and uh, debate on literature language and uh, rhetorics history books are written by john fox the uh, that's very important book of martyrs book of martyrs is talking about the history from uh, uh, john wycliffe to uh, the end of elizabeth and uh, raffel hollinshed's chronicles of england scotland and, and ireland this is also uh, a very important contribution in uh, history of england like this there were other uh, history writers uh, richard hooker has shared his ideas on politics as well as religion in his most famous work that's of the laws of ecclesiastical polity another group of uh, prose writers of renaissance age was where uh, george gascoigne uh, william webby now uh, this group has started the debate on Uh, literature or poetry or uh, the way of writing and language and you will find that all these writers were debating with each other for example philip sidney now philip sidney start uh, philip sidney has written apology for poetry in reply to stephen gosson school of abuse in which stephen gosson has criticized poet and poetry now philip sidney has a uh, favored poetry like this uh, uh thomas campion and samuel D daniel this two uh, were also in a debate thomas campion criticized the way poets uh, were writing poetry in those days for example uh, he gave value to meters he told that poetry should follow particular style and meter in uh, his very observations in the art of english poetry but samuel daniel he rejected the idea he said that rhyme is the most important not the meter so uh, this how they were in a constant debate with each other so uh, all the words are very important for example this uh, george puttenham he uh, his work the art of english poetry is divided in in three books the first one the first book is talking about the history of poetry the second in the second book he talked about uh, five kinds of different verses and structures of poetry and the third book is talking about figures of speech which are which were used in uh, the time uh, while writing poetry by different poets so uh, these writers were among the earliest uh criticism or critical writing they were the founder of this criticism that that's what we can say so they were in a constant debate with each other so these are the two groups of uh, prose writers one that's historical uh, writers who have written histories and the second group 
have uh, debated, discussed uh, the language of poetry or the literature and the rhetoric of the poetry. Uh, third one that's posed to Renessa Proust till the restoration. Uh, here we have a variety of writings, starting from Francis Bacon, uh, who is considered as the father or the major essayist of Renaissance period. Uh, we can uh, not keep him aside, uh, whoever is preparing for Netset, he needs to study him in detail. Uh, his contribution is his essays and uh, he is the first one to talk about reason and research. Uh, he taught that knowledge, a person should uh, have knowledge through observations, not from authority. So uh, he is the first one to apply reason. And due to his essays, it is influence of his essays that uh, in later ages, in restoration age, there was the region of the society, that's Royal Society London. So the society which is based on science. So it is his essays uh, which influenced Royal Society. Francis Bacon's essays are divided in uh, two categories. The first one is uh, civil and another one is moral. Now, civil essays are talking about administration on civil services as well as politics and these kind of uh, topics related to, to the government and politics. And moral essays are talking about uh, human nature and the social instru uh, institutions like marriage, divorce, love, uh, more common topics uh, were dealt with in these essays. If you go further uh, in back in essays, then you can find that he has covered too many topics. You will not find a single topic which is which he has not dealt with. So that's a very uh, interesting idea he has discussed in his essays. And uh, if we want to study back in, then we need entire day to cover uh, his words. So let us move forward with other writers. Robert Burton, another uh, important or significant prose writer. Uh, he has written this anatomy of melancholy. He, fa he found melancholy, the state of mind in each and every uh, emotion of love, hate and everything. Then uh, Thomas Fuller, Thomas Brown, Jeremy Taylor. Here you find that there is a variety of uh, topics uh, these writers uh, dealt with. For example, uh, Thomas Hobbes has written Leviathan. That's very uh, prominent work. Now this word Leviathan, the title refers to a biblical character, which means sea monster. The meaning of Leviathan is sea monster. Uh, here he is uh, symbolizing, he is using this name Laviat to, uh, to symbolize or to refer power and strength. And he is indicating uh, that uh, the nation, the commonwealth should have that power and uh, strength. So this how he has used biblical reference in his work. Like this, uh, we have variety of subjects like uh, uh, religious medicine, which means a doctor's uh, religion or religion of the medical profession, uh, which is written by Thomas Brown. So it also covers entirely different uh, topic. And then we have Isaac Walton and Thomas Fuller. Uh, Thomas Fuller has written his Verdes of England, which portrays England and the history of England in totally different way. So the sketches he has presented, it is uh, very much unique in his days. And that's why the Worthies of England becomes very important uh, text to study that time England. Now, this is very interesting uh, fact files. Let us, uh, let us try to understand some of the important and surprising facts of these ages. 
uh, we know Edmund Spencer is a poet, but uh, it's very surprising that he has also produced a prose work that's a view of the present state of Ireland. In this work, he has uh, described a British dominance and victimization of Irish people in those days. So uh, this work stands among the first of colonial writings. Uh, because uh, you notice that here, Spencer is criticizing the colonial attitude of Britishers, the Great Britain, and how they are uh, victimizing, how they are uh, colonizing Irish people in those days. So Edmund Spencer was among uh, the earliest writers who described the colonial attitude of Britishers. Then, uh, Isaac Walton and Lord Brook uh, were started writing biography. Lord Brook has described the life of uh, Philip Sidney and Isaac Walton, the same one who has written the complete Anglo. Uh, he has written life of John Dunn. And he has also uh, written lives of other uh, poets as well, metaphysical poets, especially. Then another interesting fact is about Milton's prose, uh, the writer of uh, Paradise Lost. He has also written a prose work that's very important. Uh, the title is Edu Patriotica. This work deals with censorship. Uh, in this work, Milton has criticized that how uh, the government or the politics or power is since making uh, every work, uh, you know, censored. They, they are censoring all the works, and then uh, he is talking about the freedom of expression, freedom of uh, writer. So uh, Milton is also a very important prose writer. He has not just written uh, poetry and epics, but he has also produced this significant prose work. Then uh, Mary Cavendish. Mary Cavendish. Cavendish was the first woman to be allowed in Royal Society uh, London. Uh, and he uh, and she has also produced too many uh, essays talking about science. So Mary Cavendish, sorry, Margaret Cavendish, we can uh, include her among the first women writers and essays of the uh, age. Okay, here uh, you will find that there is a variety of uh, uh, prose written in neoclassical age. Now, neoclassical age itself is considered as age of reason and prose. So there is going to be uh, many uh, prose writers, essays, and uh, uh, diaries were also uh, written in the age. Am I audible clearly now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, I hope you're familiar with the diary writers of the age. There were two diary writers, Samuel Pappies and John Evelyn. Now, uh, uh, you find that with these two writers, diary writings are associated, and uh, uh, you will be surprised to know that uh, the diaries of these two uh, writers were published 150 years uh, after uh, their death or after the diaries were written. So Samuel uh, Pappy's uh, diary was published after 150 years. Uh, so uh, his contribution in uh, neoclassical prose is very interesting because he has never meant uh, his diaries to be published uh, later on or even after his uh, death. So this is very personal, talking about uh, the personal encounters, feelings, uh, but uh, mostly whatever he has uh, witnessed, whatever he has uh, experienced in that London life, that he uh, talked about in his diaries. So if we want to know the restoration age closely, if we want to know uh, the culture of restoration age, then uh, one should refer 
and his diaries. Then there are variety of uh, essays on those days. For example, let's begin with essays on politics, religion, and uh, uh, social commentary. There were uh, multiple authors who uh, has commented on society in those days, like Defoe, Daniel Defoe, the writer, the novelist, has commented uh, on society in his work, uh, Shortest Free with uh, Dissenters. Edmund Burke has uh, written political essays and he commented on power and politics. Then philosophical essays of uh, John Locke. John Locke was among the first one who has experienced, who has written about human psychology and uh, human philosophy, philosophy of human mind. That's what we can see. For example, if you are familiar with the term tabula rasa, this term he has given in his essay concerning human understanding, in which he, uh, in this essay, he is talking about human mind. That human mind is like a blank slate. This tabula rasa, uh, it means blank slate. So human mind is like a blank slate without any experience, without any knowledge. And then uh, the impressions fall uh, to human mind. And then we, we start having experiences and knowledge and everything. So uh, this uh, John Locke was the first one to give this term. Abraham Cowley, whom we know as a metaphysical poet, uh, he has uh, written personal essays like of myself one of his essays uh, is entitled as of myself so uh, he has described his feelings and experiences in these essays of course uh, restoration and neoclassical age is known as the uh, beginner age of periodicals and journals now there are two interesting figures addison and Steele, Richard Steele. Both these authors, Richard Steele was dramatist as well as an essayist. Uh, both have started uh, these two pamphlets, The Tackler and Spectator. And uh, these periodicals became too famous and they have contributed in these periodicals in the form of essays. The, these essays also introduced some interesting characters, fictional characters, of course, but then there was mixture of fact and fiction. For example, Sir Roger de Cavoli, uh, it became very famous. The character sketches of some of the characters became too famous that it is believed that their essays uh, influenced novel as a form of literature. And then the after these essays, after the character sketches, we have proper form uh, a novel. So it was later on developed by Defoe and uh, the first generation novelist like uh, uh, like this Henry Fielding and uh, Samuel Richardson who uh, have written the first novels. So Edison and Steele were the first one or the originator we can say of the character, proper fictional characters. Uh, of course, uh, restoration age was uh, uh, was the original, or you can say that in restoration age, that was the foundation of Royal Society London. Royal Society London. In and this is, is uh, this is a society. Royal Society is about science. And due to this the Royal Society, it influenced uh, writers to write science fiction, sorry, science writing or uh, scientific essays. So uh, there, were, uh, there were journals and periodicals on science as well as essays uh, describing scientific uh, topics. Even an advice essays written, for example, Modest Proposal. This is an advice uh, essay by Jonathan uh, Swift giving advice to the parents.
then we have literary criticism of course there were multiple critics like john dryden and dr samuel johnson who uh, have written uh, essays on criticism uh, criticism is entirely different discipline so we are not talking about uh, literary critical essays of uh, john dryden like of dramatic poesy or Samuel Johnson's uh, works, but uh, we must refer because they have contributed in non-fictional prose of the age. As well as Dr. Samuel Johnson is famous for uh, his lives and dictionary. Uh, he was the first one to develop a particular and well-formed dictionary. Uh, histories were written. Uh, the most important history is decline and fall of uh, Roman Empire. And uh, Wealth of Nation is written by Adam Smith. It talks about uh, economics. Journal to Stella, again, Jonathan Swift has written this. Swift has written letters but the title is Journal to Stella, G capital, Journal to Stella. Uh, in this, he has written letters to Stella. Stella is a name you, he has used for E. Sir Johnson. E. Sir Johnson, uh, who is known as uh, Stella. So these are some of the important prose writings of uh, the Restoration and Neoclassical Age. Uh, apart from this, there are many other writers who contributed, but uh, we cannot cover all of them uh, and uh, we must be specific about some of the very important prose writings of uh, this age because uh, these net and set examination, uh, in these examinations, there were uh, questions multiple times that what is the name or uh, whom Swift is referring as Stella. So the answer is Easter Johnson. Like this, uh, and there were uh, multiple questions on this science writing or even periodicals uh, by Edison Steele. So, uh, what, which were the uh, days where these journals, where these periodicals were published? Like, Konsi uh, Varpe ye journals have published, ye periodicals have published. So, that's Tuesday, Thursday, and uh, Saturday. So, one must be very clear about knowing about this uh, periodicals uh, by Edison and Steele. Again, the fact files, some interesting facts about these two ages. Uh, John Evelyn, the diarist, he was the first one to talk about pollution and reform. for 150 years uh, his diaries were decoded and it is me, decoded by student yes the screen has uh, the yes ppt has stopped showing okay Is it visible now? Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah. Okay. So I was talking about uh, Samuel Pappies, the diarist, uh, who wrote in a cryptic code. Uh, he has written his diary in a, a particular code. And that's why it became too difficult to decode his diary. And uh, that's why after 150 years, his diary was decoded by a student. Uh, who was uh, studying 
master's student was just studying and then uh, he decoded the diary and then it was published after 150 years of uh, uh, of uh, his death uh, abraham cowley whom we know as a poet metaphysical poet but then uh, he has also written essays that I, I have already said that uh, he has written an autobiographical essays it's not talking about a particular topic but of uh, himself so we can to know about his experiences of writing poetry of and the experiences which he encountered and everything your feelings thoughts uh, through uh, his essays uh, eliza hayward uh, the interesting figure of uh, restoration age uh, she has started the female spectator the female spectator that's the magazine that's the periodical that's Eliza Haywood has started in that age. And another interesting uh, incident, uh, rather, I can say, who asks what's happened in uh, uh, a neoclassical age? Isaac Bickerstaff. Isaac Bickerstaff was a pseudonym adopted by Jonathan uh, Swift. Now, uh, he was the first one to adopt this pseudonym uh, to uh, predict death of uh, one astrologer and that's John Patridge on this April Fool Day. He has just um, uh, written a letter, he has uh, published one article uh, predicting the death of a uh, person, death of John Patridge. And uh, again, uh, he has published letter on the day, the same day uh, which he has predicted that on this day, uh, this writer is going to die. Sorry, this astrologer is going to die. On the same day, he has published another letter that the person has uh, died. And then you find that the people were mourning uh, after reading this letter. And uh, even if all these is uh, fictional, then people thought that this is real, that the person has uh, died. So it is actually uh, who asks the, uh, the person the person is created on this April Fool Day because uh, John Patridge was a kind of a rival uh, of a Swift and many other uh, writers, a rival of a particular ideology, not a person, but ideology. So Swift has adopted the pseudonym Isaac Bickerstaff uh, while uh, predicting the death of John Patridge. And uh, this pseudonym again is used by Richard Steele while uh, writing uh, essays uh, for the periodical The Spectator. So uh, one pseudonym used by both Jonathan Swift and Richard Steele. Uh, Prose of Romantic Age. Again, you find that in Romantic Age, there were multiple personal essays. Uh, instead of talking about more objective topics, the prose writers were selected uh, to talk about their feelings and personal experiences. And Shakespeare and uh, the age of Renaissance became the favorite one to uh, deal with. So you will find here there were multiple uh, critiques of Shakespeare or uh, you, know, you can say admirer of Shakespeare. For example, Charles Lamb, who has written very important work essays of Elia and uh, Tales from Shakespeare. Now, Tales from Shakespeare, uh, he has uh, uh, written with his sister, Mary Lamb. And he he has, uh, you can say, has simplified. He has written different version of Shakespeare's uh, dramas uh, with Mary Lamb. This is, uh, you can say, joint, uh, jointly adventure. Another one is William Hazlitt. William Hazlitt has given too many lectures on Shakespeare, but he was not someone uh, who appreciated uh, Shakespeare or who has just done appreciation. He actually criticized, who criticized Shakespeare and he said that to perform Shakespeare's dramas means to make something uh, 
to make something unimportant to make some uh, something like uh, a very good topic and then present it a, as a pantomime as as uh, it is uh, just a melodrama or it is just a very unimportant work so william hazlitt uh, has criticized shakespeare as well so uh, uh, of course he has appreciated uh, the way shakespeare has developed his uh, political dramas or uh, the way shakespeare has talked about politics and that's uh, he admired and he criticized uh, uh, shakespeare some of the plays as well in his lectures now later on his lectures are published uh, in a work form so he was among uh, the critics of shakespeare uh, thomas de quincey and his famous work is the confessions of an english opium eater uh, he talked about his different moods and how uh, how and what he felt. Even he talked about uh, the guilt he felt after having uh, opium. So this is his most famous work, which is revealing his state of mind. So Thomas De Quincey and his work, The Confessions of an Opium, English Opium Eater, uh, he talked about his uh, mental state, uh, mental state, and personal feelings uh, express, expressed in this work. Another important work is Mary Wollstonecraft, a vindication of the rights of women. So uh, this uh, work belongs to early uh, feminism, early feminist movement. Uh, the first wave of feminism, which describes uh, the rights of women, political and economic rights of women. So Mary Wollstonecraft and this work, Vindication of the Rights of Women, uh, is very important for the movement of feminism. Esti Coleridge, and you're familiar with uh, him as the poet of uh, Kubla Khan, The Rhyme of Ensign Marino. And of course, uh, you know that he has uh, contributed with uh, Wordsworth in lyrical ballads. And he has written this biography of literary, which is talking about imagination and uh, fancy. So uh, very uh, beautifully, he has discriminated between what is imagination, what is fancy, and what is a primary imagination, what is a secondary imagination. So it is the essay which is important for criticism as well. So you must have studied it under the paper of uh, criticism instead of uh, non-fictional prose. Another one is P.B. Shelley's defense of poetry. Now, this is very important. Uh, this NETSET exam exams how these kind of kinds of questions about non-fictional prose. They were asking questions not uh, from the essays, the section of uh, prose writers, but they were asking about poets or a novelist who have written prose or non-fictional works. So uh, they were actually uh, there were actually many poets and uh, novelists who have described uh, their state of mind or who have given theories of poetry. So Shelley considered poet as a supreme being. And uh, Shelley also considered a poet as a philosopher, not just poet, but philosopher. Even uh, Keats letters are very important uh, prose, uh, prose writing because uh, he has addressed most of his letters to his family and friends. Not a particular person, but there are many. Uh, different people were addressed in the letters. So family and uh, friends. Is addressed to his letters. Uh, even one of his essay is talking about negative capability. That's interesting concept. And later on, this uh, concept uh, was uh, uh, this this concept became part of a criticism. 
so uh, this concept is given by keats in his letters not in uh, his poetry uh, so his letters are very important he talked about imagination and uh, beauty beauty is truth like this whatever his theory uh, of, of writing poetry is he uh, talked about his uh, theories in his letters then dorothy wordsworth's journals and Dorothy Wordsworth was sister of uh, William Wordsworth, and she has written journals. Uh, that's in these journals, she has described her experiences, her life with William Wordsworth. So uh, her journals and the entries in these journals are very significant, not only to know the mind of Dorothy, but also life of uh, William Wordsworth. So it is a very important prose writing of Romantic Age. Then we have prose of a Victorian age. Now, uh, uh, there are multiple prose writers and they all talked about various topics. Mostly, they were talking about uh, uh, different topics related to society and they were also giving advices and they were teaching something. They were also talking about some social problems of the age, like uh, Thomas Carlyle's famous work was Sartre's Resorto. Uh, Charles Darwin, I hope you're familiar with him. And uh, he has written Origin of Species. John Stuart Mill, who was also among the uh, major prose writer of a uh, uh, Victorian age. Uh, Mill has written different essays. William Morris uh, has written uh, many prose works like News from Nowhere. And uh, he has dealt with different topics, including uh, utopian concepts, including the social problems which Victorian age uh, has encountered with. Matthew Arnold was among the first cultural critics. Uh, uh, he has written famous essay, Cultural, uh, Culture and Anarchy. Not only this one, but uh, he was a major figure of uh, uh, criticism as well. So uh, he was among the early uh, critics who uh, talked about uh, culture. John Ruskin, uh, Walter Pato, both uh, were not only prose writers, but art critic as well. They also uh, uh, written about, uh, they have also written uh, about this aesthetic movement. Aesthetic movement, which we know as art for art's sake. So uh, they believed that any work of art is not for the purpose of teaching. It should not teach something. Instead, the major goal of this work, uh, these art work is to please, just to give, just to offer pleasure into the reader and not to teach something. So um, there were two groups. One uh, who were in favor of uh, a didactic literature and another who wanted to take liberty in writing and believe that the uh, goal of art is to offer uh, pleasure and not to instruct, not to teach something. So John Ruskin has written a very important work that is Modern Painters. Modern Painters. And Walter Pato. Walter Pato uh, has written many essays and uh, he was an admirer of Shakespeare and the Renaissance age, especially Renaissance age. Uh, he was also among the early writers who talked about uh, uh, who talked about uh, lesbians and the male and male male relationship. So uh, Walter Pater, Oscar Wilde, they all were together uh, who believed about aestheticism. Samuel Butler has uh, written a work uh, called Erevon. If you will uh, read it with uh, beginning from the last letter, then it is actually uh, the reverted spelling of 
nowhere. This uh, work refers to, or it is actually uh, a kind of a work which is influenced by Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travels, kind of a dystopia, dystopian work, and uh, uh, it offers criticism of humanity, as it is offered by Jonathan Swift in Gulliver's Travels. So it is reminding us very famous for it, Gulliver's Travels. So these are some of the Victorian uh, prose writings. Some of the very interesting facts about the prose works of the uh, Romantic and Victorian age. Wordsworth has also written a uh, very important, a very different prose that's Guide to this Guide to the Lakes by Wordsworth. Guide to the Lake, it is uh, this work is sharing words with experiences, uh, or it is kind of a travelogue. Travelogue means a description of lakes. So Wordsworth has written Guide to the Lakes. It's a prose work, it's not a poetry. Uh, G.S. Mill, John Stuart Mill, uh, who was a prominent prose writer, was the first one who advocated women, uh, first man, or you can say that man who advocated women, who talked about rights of women. So uh, with uh, his influence, there were many women who started, who, who, who uh, you know, who was influenced too much by John Stuart Mill's ideas. So if people believe that there is um, no man who talked about feminism or women's rights, then it is not so. John Stuart Mill is giving us best example who was a man to advocate women. Uh, and Matthew Arnold's uh, essay, Culture and Anarchy, was the first <coughs> one, the base of cultural studies. I hope you have already uh, studied these cultural studies that's emerging discipline. And uh, today there were many students who wanted to, who wants to study, who want to go forward with cultural study as a totally different discipline. So uh, Matthew Arnold was the base, the pioneer of cultural studies. And he is considered as the first cultural critic. Uh, he has defined <coughs> the definition of in culture in this essay. Aestheticism, these three were the writers uh, who were in favor of aestheticism, but Pater, William Morris, and John Ruskin. I uh, have already talked about them. Keats' criticism, Keats' theory, that's negative capability, he has described in his letters. And uh, there were many times the question was asked about Kids' letters and this term negative capability in that set examinations. So you must uh, be very careful about reading the letters of kids, not just poetry or odes written by kids. And the last one that's prose of modern age. You will find that as we go forward, uh, you will encounter with different uh, prose writers, and there were multiple. Uh, prose writings, prose forms, and disciplines. For example, psychology. Sigmund Freud, the psychologist who is also known as father of psychology, has written many works on psychology that influenced literature too much in a modern age, including the narrative technique like stream of consciousness. And there were many writers who started writing with uh, the theory of Sigmund Freud, the psychological theories of Sigmund Freud. Even uh, Frank Kermod was, uh, was also a literary critic, and he has uh, written this very sense of an ending, which is talking about uh, novels. Novels and different uh, kinds of novels narratives in novels so it is theorizing the sense of an ending is talking about theory of uh, novels james fraser 
uh, the golden bow if you have studied modern age then we can never put aside golden bow that's very important work in this work he has described myths mythological stories and how it um, has affected various writings and there is a, a tradition of myth a separately the shakespeare critique or the man who admired who studied shakespeare totally uh, you can say in a, a different way so ac uh, bradley has also written this shakespearean tragedy it's a prose work it's a kind of a, a criticism evaluation analytical work on uh, shakespeare edmund gosse uh, the biographer and there were many other biographers uh, they have written uh, biographies of different poets and writers and it was a time modern age was a time in which gave birth to autobiographical prose like uh, virginia woolf t.s eliot and there were many who have written biographic sorry autobiographical uh, prose so virginia woolf has written there's uh, three guineas and uh, a room of one's own so these essays were very much these essays are autobiographical in the sense so it is the time of the development of autobiographical prose and of course uh, modern age is considered as the beginning of uh, new criticism uh, practical criticism and there were many uh, critiques including t s eliot uh, uh, f lewis uh, i richards and there were many and from this modern age there were many theories and this many theories and critical concepts which emerged in this age so uh, from this from modern age we cannot uh, include the prose works the criticisms and essays in one particular slide so uh, we can say that we can study prose works of uh, elizabethan age or victorian age but then it is impossible to cover everything in uh, modern age so uh, apart from uh, these ages we can find that there are uh, many other uh, uh, prose works in uh, different literatures like indian writing in english or uh, post colonial literatures so this net set examinations covers everything uh, it also uh, includes the essays by salman rushdie it also includes prose works by uh, uh, indian writers like uh, like aurobindo or uh, the and the essays by indian uh, indian writers or in translations as well so it's a, a very uh, a, a long topic to cover everything so uh, here uh, i'm stopping here if you have any question then you can ask i'm i'm just it stops the uh, i'm just stopping the screen share if any student is having any doubt or any questions regarding the topic you can ask ma'am in the comment section All our BA students or MA or many students are there. Undergraduate as well as postgraduate. Okay. Ma'am, if okay. no one is having any doubt, no one is having any doubt. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for such valuable information on the topic. I am glad that you are just, here. Oh, just one minute, come. Kamish, Kamish, Kamish. Uh, there are many viewers uh, on YouTube channel, and uh, we are keeping track on the comments of uh, uh, the participants. And uh, in case we find any serious question, uh, we'll definitely email it to you so that you can answer the participant accordingly, madam. Okay. 
ओके ओके थैंक यू सो मच फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी इन एंड सॉरी फॉर द इंटरप्शन देयर वाज सम देयर वाज सम प्रॉब्लम इन द नेट आई डोंट नो व्हाट बट आई एम टीचिंग दिस Yes. So there are four thousand six hundred plus okay. uh, participants who are watching the lecture. Thank you, madam. Okay. Okay. I am going to summarize just 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 for something. Okay. To summarize today's man's lecture, I would like to say that today's man's lecture is about the man's lecture. 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 Today's man's lecture is about the man's the topics types of non fictional prose pre renaissance prose post renaissance prose restoration and neo classical prose fact files prose of romantic age prose of victorian age and prose of modern age she, she also explained the history of non fictional prose she gave us insights about the non fictional prose and i hope ma'am's lecture would help students to prepare in the best way for ugc net and i can see ma'am has also covered all the questions from the comment section so i kamish siddiqui on behalf of bnn college would like to extend my sincere gratitude to you ma'am thank you for giving us such your for your valuable time and coherence for such an amazing explanation your session has enlightened us more than one way i am sure this will help the students in their preparation for ugc net i would like to end today's workshop by letting you all know about tomorrow's scheduled workshop tomorrow's scheduled workshop is on the topic by is is on the topic fiction by raj mukhopadhyay assistant professor department of english netaji subhas mahavidyalay haldiwari only at 7 pm and it will be hosted by miss anam sheik until then take care everyone keep hustling keep room keep improving Thank you for joining. See you all tomorrow. Good night.